Good afternoon. Welcome. Wow, today we have so many people. Welcome to our SMIC ITCM Health Awareness Webinar. I'm Sister Michelle. I want to take this opportunity to, to thank our SMIC team that helps make these webinars happen. To Dr. Eddie, our president, Sister Regina, our academic dean, both of you are our inspirations. To our tireless staff, Marisa and Shine, who are behind the scene today and runs all of these webinars. To all of our speakers, thank you very much for your generosity to share your knowledge and precious experience with us. Today we have Cassie Lopez to share with us her experiences. Let's welcome Cassie. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. So thanks for sharing your time with me. Thanks for coming. Uh, so I hope you, uh, you we all learned something from this afternoon's talk. And I'm open to your own suggestion if you have also proven technique to address the, issue, uh, the condition of cold hands and feet. So, sister? Yes. Yeah, we will start. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for sharing your time with me. My name is Catherine Lopez. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to discuss the topic called hands and feet in TCM perspective. My personal objective for this talk is for us not only to look at how to address the specific condition of cold hands and feet, but I also hope that by sharing uh, TCM way of looking at our body, looking at our health, we would be empowered to, um, to take charge of our own health and be our, prime, our very own primary caregiver. TCM is a body of knowledge accumulate, accumulated through thousands of years of human experiences. And so uh, it's very intuitive, it's very common sense in a in a way so to speak so i hope you'll enjoy this afternoon's talk and um, thank you once again for joining me for the outline of this talk we'll discuss when do we experience cold hands and feet and why do we experience it in the perspective of tcm and we will discuss tang fu the role of tang fu or organs of our body uh, that affects or influences uh, the condition of uh, cold hands and feet. And then uh, from the cause, we will derive the principle of treatment. And then I will suggest some self-care tips. And finally, end the presentation with some key points to remember. So when do we experience this? When? First is due to external environment. So obviously, we experience cold hands and feet more when it's winter than when it's summer, or when you are in an air-conditioned room than when you are outside. So the external environment uh, plays a, a, a factor in, a, in this uh, condition. Next is a sudden or high level of fear or anxiety. Have you heard experience, had expression uh, getting cold feet uh, just before a wedding uh, or can you remember the time uh, when you are next in line to give a speech or when you're called for a recitation don't you feel that cold hand and feet when you experience a sudden or high level of fear anxiety you you might get experience cold hands and feet next is due to um, it could be due to just nature, our body constitution. It could be due to age or gender. Um, it's just nature that babies' uh, hands and feet feels warmer than an elderly person. Or by nature, women experience cold hands and feet more than the men. So why do we experience this? Why do we experience cold hands and feet? I would like to use the illustration 
of a faucet uh, or a tap water. So there are two general conditions why our faucet might not be flowing with tap water. One is when the source of water dries up and second would be the pipes leading the water from the source to your faucet at home is clogged up, is leaking somewhere or not or not working properly. So it's the same as um, if we compare our hands and feet as the faucet uh, flowing water or um, not getting enough heat, there, there could be two reasons. One is when the source of heat is not enough and so it hardly can reach your hands and feet. And uh, in TCM, uh, the heat is in the form of yang qi. So yang qi is, uh, it's defined as includes uh, the warming, activating, excitation, etc. Here I want to say that uh, qi and blood are interrelated, connected. So um, yang qi can also ride on the blood to, to be distributed around the body. Okay, next reason is, as I've said, it could be the channel of distribution having some problem. And when we recall, one of the reasons we experience cold hands and feet is when we experience high level of emotion, anxiety or fear. Anxiety and fear restrain the flow of chi in our body. Chi or um, another way of saying chi could also be a force that propels um, your blood to flow uh, around in different channels in our body. So when you experience high level of emotion, um, it tends to restrain, clog up the channel of distribution of heat and blood in your body. Next is when the nutrients, the food intake, water and the food that you take are not properly digested. And this also clogs up the distribution system of our yang chi or blood from the source to our extremities. So in summary, there are three reasons why we experience cold hands and feet. One is when we don't have enough yang chi, okay? And then next would be Qi stagnation. Qi, the propelling force is being restrained due to intense emotion. So it's a channel distribution, um, malfunctioning. And then obstruction in the channel caused probably by um, our food intake not properly uh, digested and distributed. But in summary, we could uh, further um, simplified into two reasons. Uh, one is your body does not have enough yang chi. That's why there's no not enough to be distributed at the at your to your hands and feet. Second is if you have enough heat in your body, but you, you're still experiencing uh, cold hands and feet, then probably it's the dis it's a distribution problem or the channel bringing that heat to your extremities is blocked by intense emotion or by improperly digested um, um, byproduct of uh, what you eat. Now we will discuss the role of Zhang Fu, the role of the organs in our body uh, that affects uh, the condition of cold hands and feet. Let's first define Zhang Fu or organ. So we'll discuss the organ perspective on this slide. Zhang Fu is a collective, collective term for the internal organs of human beings, including the Zhang organs, five Zhang organs, six Fu organs, and extraordinary organs. In TCM, it represents the totality of the organs that makes the body functions. function. So we will discuss um, four 
Zhang Fu uh, as having a crucial role in this uh, topic, in this condition. First is the kidney or shun. I want to emphasize here that uh, in Western medicine, um, kidney is defined by its physical organ and it has different uh, function from a traditional Chinese medicine um, view. And so I put the Chinese term shun here so that we would develop new um, knowledge on how traditional Chinese medicine uh, look at these organs. So shun or kidney, and then we will talk about P Wei uh, or the spleen and stomach in English translation, P Wei. And then we will look at the Tan, uh, English translation is liver. Again, it doesn't directly translate to Western medicine's uh, function of liver. And then we will look at the heart or sin. Uh, so for ease of um, absorption, I'll just, um, I'll still refer, call them by their English uh, translation. However, please again note that it doesn't uh, translate 100% to the Western medicine definition of this organ. Okay, kidney or shun in traditional Chinese medicine stores the essences that we receive from our parents. So it's the congenital foundation of our being, of our body. And it's the origin of our vital chi and primordial or original yang. This definition are from uh, World Health Organization standard definition. So I just put in the standard definition, although it um, might be hard to understand, the terms are not familiar. But I want us to focus on the vital chi and primordial yang, yang chi. If you remember, this is the source of heat in our body. And from kidney or shun, uh, it supports all the other uh, development of all the other organs and supports the yang and yin of all the other organs. So this we receive from our parents and it stores the essences from our parents. But a baby cannot grow up depending on just the essences they receive from their parents. We need to eat, drink, take in nutrients for us to develop. And so that's the role of P. Wei, postnatal foundation. So it is the essential material foundation to maintain vital activities. Postnatal, so after we're born, we have to eat and the P. Wei spleen stomach what it does is it transform the food the grains and water that we eat and it transport throughout our body okay so p wait it here it uh there's an icon that uh that show a cooking pot so basically that's the role of our p way or spleen stomach again it transform the nutrients cook it transform it and distribute it uh, all around our body. Next, we'll discuss the can. Can, can or liver is known also as the commander uh, among the organs. It commands the blood to where it is needed. So it's a very important organ in our body. It also stores blood. And here, First bullet, the liver maintains free flow of chi over the entire body. Again, free flow, um, it relates to the channel of distribution that we discussed a while ago. And then it regulates emotion because um, if our channel or chi is not flowing uh, well, it affects directly affects our emotion. And it also promotes P way digestion. So since it um, it regulates the flow of chi, if you remember I said the P and way transform and transport. So uh, 
malfunctioning liver would not be able to transport the nutrients properly. So we remember that liver or can is regulate the flow of chi if you look at the drawing there. Finally, we talk about the heart or the sin. Sin um, governs our blood and vessel in TCM perspective. So, a weak heart will not be able to have the power to pump to our extremities. So, that's the role of the heart. In summary, if the essences that we inherited from our parents are not enough, then we might have inborn deficiency. Again, we go back to the causes of cold hands and feet. Deficiency is one of them. Or, our poor digestion could cause deficiency as well as block the channel. So, when they are not properly digested, then we don't absorb the nutrition. So, it causes deficiency. And then, when it's not properly digested, it blocks the channel, if you remember our previous slide. Then, from the liver, a weak and constrained liver obstruct and slows down flow okay finally a weak heart can reach extremities so these are the role of tang fu in the topic of cold hands and feet okay so how do we know if the cold hands and feet that we are experiencing right now is it deficient or just blockage is it deficiency or just a distribution problem I propose to test. One is if you feel, if you feel cold, uh, despite being in a warm environment, then you're probably deficient. So when you look around and people are wearing sleeveless and you want to wear a jacket, then you're probably deficient. Next is when you put your hand on your forehead and you feel your hands uh, your hand is noticeably uh, colder than your forehead, then probably it's a distribution problem. Meaning, you're hot uh, in your core, in your body. It's just not reaching your extremities. So that's just uh, two simple tests. Having discussed the reasons for having cold hands and feet, then we will go to uh, principle of treatment. First, we said deficiency. So if there's deficiency, then we tonify or we fortify our body. If it's um, you have a cold uh, constitution, then we warm the yang. Yang qi, again, is the source of heat in our body. There could be a lot of ways. You can see from the icons enumerated here. One is you can take herbal medicine. But please consult your TCM doctors before you take any medicine. One thing one tongue is a common uh, herbal concoction, but again, please consult your um, TCM doctor. And then second is to clear the blockage or smoothen the flow of qi. Okay, this is the distribution problem. So the principle of treatment is obvious, obviously to clear the blockage or smoothen the flow of qi um, to address the distribution problem. Okay, we'll go to our self-care suggestion. Again, under the principle of uh, really empowering ourselves to take care of our own health. Okay, so self-care suggestion number one, sunbathing. Sun in Chinese is Tai Yang. Tai, most at most, the most Yang. Yang, again, is uh, from, we have discussed Yang Qi, is the heat in our body. Um, and so we get our yang where else, but the most yang in our nature, the Mother Earth has blessed us abundantly with this in the Philippines. So let's take um, advantage of this. And uh, wh which part is the best uh, to get uh, sun? It's our back part because our back is the considered 
young part of our body. And so, when you would, if you want to warm your young, then you expose your back to the sun. And also, uh, there are acute points at our back, specifically from the bladder channel, and also the do channel, where um, we can uh, fortify, tonify all of our zhang fu. Imagine. So, it's really, um, in Chinese, half the effort, uh, twice the result uh, kind of uh, treatment. And so how long would you want to expose your um, back, at, back to the sun? Uh, I would say when you uh, feel your body warming up a bit and slight perspiration is the best, do not wait until you are heavily perspiring because it also drains your body. Next is early to sleep, early to rise. Seems a uh, common sense and also free. It's a free, um, you don't spend to sleep. But I, I understand it might not be easy for some people. However, um, let's do our best because the liver, the commander of the commander organ in our body uh, needs sleep for uh, it to be strong. Uh, in Chinese, uh, it says when one lies down, the blood returns to liver. Also, liver stores the blood. So if it does not have enough, if it does not get enough blood, um, then it won't be able to, um, to command the blood to flow smoothly and it also affects again the smooth flow of chi affects our emotion also so um, this is just to say if you want a good liver sleep early sleep enough uh, um, specifically it's best that to be asleep between 1 a.m to 3 a.m Next suggestion is a foot bath. Uh, we can soak our feet uh, at around 40 degrees Celsius uh, temperature of water. Do this 20 minutes before you sleep. And preferably the depth of uh, the water would be enough to cover around three inches up your ankle. Or if you have a deep enough bucket, you can soak it until uh, just below your knee. Uh, that is because uh, there are acute points on this location, specifically the three inches above your ankle. There's a sun in jiao, the acute point sun in jiao, where it stimulates the kidney, liver, and spleen. So, uh, as we have discussed a while ago, uh, these organs are very important. Uh, to maintain a healthy uh, flow of chi and digestion, all that causes cold hands and feet if it's not working properly. Do this once or twice a week. Uh, if you look it up in the shopping, uh, online shopping platform, you'll get this herbal pack. Uh, it's, it's not expensive. You can put it in your hot water. Uh, like a moxa pack or a ginger pack uh, to um, to add benefits to your feet soaking. Next is we would want to look at how to stimulate our heart. So we discussed the kidney, liver, spleen a while ago. Now, how about our heart channel? How do we stimulate it? Um, so. If you look at the uh, the picture there, it's at the channel, the first three acupoint of heart channel. So heart one is in uh, below your armpit. I don't need to um, define specific, specifically where it is, but to stimulate it, um, you just put your fist under your armpit and press. So this stimulates circulation and promotes warming and perspiration. So for how long? 
until you feel a bit warm uh, and a bit perspired. perspiring, I mean. Next is doing the exercise Ping Shui Kong or swinging hand exercise. It's literally just swinging your hands and every after five swing you kind of do a little dip, a fold of a knee. Please just take the, you can take down the, the name Ping Shui Kong or swinging hand exercise. You can look it up uh, in YouTube. Uh, but um, just a warning, uh, the dipping part where you fold uh, your knees might hurt uh, your knee. Uh, so please, if it hurts your knee, don't force it. Uh, you can just do the hands first. And personally, I I kind of modify the the. The, fo the dipping of your feet uh, to to make it uh, less um, hurtful to my knees. So I do this um, in the morning for 10 minutes, uh, at least 10 minutes. If I have time, then I can I I would do it until 30 minutes. Um, it's it obviously help uh, in the circulation. Uh, of your blood to your hands because it's swinging hand but surprisingly it also really promotes flow uh, to my my feet because I used to have a, a pain in my right heel and after doing this for some time I noticed the pain gradually reducing and and so I can say that it really helped promotes flow to the feet as well and also flow of blood to my head so um then it gives me clearer mind throughout the day and i really notice a uh, higher um more stamina uh, throughout the day so i recommend this exercise uh next suggestion is doing moxibustion moxibustion is a uh, um, is, so moxibustion this is called a moxa stick you just uh, light up the tip and so it become it looks like a cigar and you just hover your hover this stick around uh, these points that I'm going to suggest so you'll do 15 minutes per acupoint once or twice a week first acupoint that you want to moxa is the ta chui or the GV14. Uh, by warming it up using that moxa stick, it increases the yang, heat in our body, it dissipates cold, and increases immunity generally. So how do, to locate Ta Chui? It's the highest point when you bow your head at the midline spine area. Uh, the highest point will be the GV14 or the Ta Chui. Next is the Quan Yuan or the CV4, uh, REN4 or Conception Vessel 4. This fortifies our original qi, warms and fortifies spleen, treats yang deficiency and fear of cold symptoms. So remember, Quan Yuan, kidney, fortifies original qi. This refers to our kidney, as I said, Kidney shun store our stores our original chi. So just generally it um, builds up the found, our foundation for also better immunity. So from navel or umbilicus, the width of your own four fingers down, that point there, the red point. Okay, so you just hover the moxa stick on that area to warm and also the smell of burn moxa is proven to also have that chemical um, reaction stimulation to those points. And finally, to San Li or stomach 36. I think it's the single most uh, important acupoint in our entire body. 
it revived yang, tonifies qi and blood, and fortifies our spleen. So what you do is you just rest your palm on the top of your knee, like in the picture, and then rest your middle finger in the tibia bone area, and where your ring finger lies, that's more or less the two san li, or stomach 36. There's a saying in Chinese uh, um, that Jiu Zhu San Li Sheng Guo Chi Yi Ge Lao Mu Ji. So, for poor people in a, in China, they can't afford to uh, to cook chicken soup to to have that nutri nutrients or to have that nutritious meal. So what they do is just to moksa this point, and it's equivalent to having a chicken soup for good health. So remember this three point ta Tui Kuan Yuan and Zhu San Li. Okay, I think the most awaited portion eat and drink. Um, whenever we feel discomfort or we feel we're sick, normally our question would always be, What should I eat? What should I drink? Or what should I not drink? What should I eat? What, what should I not eat? So what should you eat? I suggest you eat warm food obviously uh, add spices such as cinnamon ginger pepper onions garlic leeks in your cooking in tcm warm food does not necessarily mean cook cook and warm food or temperature is warm um, it means when you say a food is warm it's it means that when you eat it, you feel warm in your body. That's how TCM uh, defines a food as being warm. And obviously, if you eat lots of ginger, pepper, onion, you feel warm. So it's defined as warm food. So you take beef, you can take beef, goat, long guns, uh, dates, honey, chocolate, grapes, durian, dalandan. So you can imagine if you have eaten these fruits, especially durian, then you would know it would make your body really warm. Avoid cold food and drinks. Watermelon is a cold uh, fruit. Pear is a cold uh, fruit. And most fruit actually are cold. And avoid cold drinks. Of course, the iconic cold drinks is milk tea. So avoid milk tea. Drink. Here I suggest goji ginger tea. Sweeten with red or brown sugar or honey. The goji berry tonifies the kidney and liver, and the sweetness tonifies the spleen, and the ginger tonifies uh, the yang of the body. So uh, here's a recipe or ingredients, but I suggest if you don't have time to boil it, you can also just um, Hot water, put in maybe 10, 10 to 15 goji berry, uh, medium size old ginger, and um, just let it steep for a while. Steep for a while like a tea. Take two to three times per week. Now we want to address uh, the emotional part, uh, the emotional cause of uh, causing the cold hands and feet. I suggest you can reach out to friends to talk and do things together and declutter your mind. So how do you do this? There is that meditation and um, in a Catholic tradition there's a centering prayer uh, that you can you can look it up and uh, for me it's one of uh, one way that I declutter my mind. For managing our stress, I would like to derive a principle from another um, tradition that's thousands that's from that's from thousands of years from the Bible, from the book of Philippians, chapter four, verses six to seven. I notice a lot of similarities from the teaching in the Bible, 
and the traditional Chinese medicine way of looking at things. Um, I wonder if it's because both of them are from thousands of years of uh, tradition and knowledge. Anyhow, uh, please indulge me as I myself benefit uh, greatly from, from this verse to manage my stress. Before we look at the text, I would like to uh, zoom in on the term hearts and minds. Uh, for those of you who have some knowledge uh, in TCM, I hope you agree with me that hearts and minds is actually shun in TCM perspective. And shun from Su Wen, uh, a TCM ancient text, it says, if Shen is intact or guarded, then body is strong. Weak Shen means weak body. The Shen to Chang, Shi Shen to Wang, in Wei Shen Chong, the Shen Chang, Shen Sui, the Shen Wu. So you can see that even thousands of years ago, TCM already recognizes that health is not just physical body, it's heart and mind. So they give um, equal, if not more, importance on the shun. The, I would say the intangible part of our being, shun. And so um, that's why this verse actually gives us a way on how to guard our heart and mind to achieve a better health. I would like to propose an equation uh, as I'm an engineer. <laughs> so I'd like to propose this um, solution. Let go because the, the verse says, do not be anxious about anything. So let go whatever is holding on, like grasping your heart right now, or your whatever is, whatever your mind is obsessed about, let go. Do not be anxious about anything, whatever it is. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. Surrender it to God. So you don't just let it go and forget about it. You let it go by surrendering it to God. And it says with thanksgiving, be grateful. Trust that um, God has your best interest in mind. So thank him in advance for the, um, the help is going to help you for the good plan that he has for your life. Let go, surrender it to God, be grateful, and it will result to peace peace of God which, tr which transcends all understanding your circumstances may not ch might not change but you'll be surprised that a peace that transcends all understanding an unexplainable peace will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus resulting to healthy shun and body a holistic health so I hope um, we could try this. We let go. We surrender it to God. Be grateful in all circumstances. Then expect to have that unexplainable peace guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And believe me, your health will gradually improve, if not dramatically improve. Finally, we have come to our last slide. Um, just a summary. First, we need to remember when we experience uh, cold hands and feet, we need to identify or think through, is it because I'm deficient or is it a channel or distribution problem? And so, of course, the treatment principle is different. Second is, I hope uh, you remember the self-care tips. Uh, top two, I would suggest the sunbathing and sleep. And 
I know we tend to lean towards like what to eat. I'm going to prepare the tea now. I'm going to eat long guns. But I would suggest that we we prioritize more the sun bathing because we don't know if um, our spleen is good enough to digest all this good food that you are taking. And plus, if you do the sun bathing, there's no consequence. But if the cause of your cold hands and feet is this distribution problem and not a real deficiency, then you might clog up your system more and causing more discomfort. You might uh, exhibit a heat sign like having acne or mouth sores if you're already um, hot or you're, you're not really deficient and you still keep eating those warm food. So just a word of caution. And finally, listen to your body. Um, and so th that's the purpose of going through the lens of explaining how TCM uh, looks through a different health condition, how to look at our body, so that we would learn to listen to our body. Okay, finally, a gentle reminder, cold hands and feet might be a symptoms of a more serious uh, disease, so it is advisable to consult a doctor if you're really concerned. I have list down a list of references. And thank you for listening. Uh, have a great day.